Hey, welcome to the Big Bear Channel. We've got some big, big bears to tackle today as we introduce you to the power rule and continue to practice it a little bit. Just in case I get into trouble today, I got my right-hand man here next to me. Gavin, in case I get stuck on a problem, he's going to help me out today. He's slurping on some hot chocolate. Um, so, hey, let's jump right into this. So what is the power rule exactly? So consider your generic function here. Um, let's see. We've got, we're saying that f of x is equal to a times, I'm going to put a little times in there, x to the n. And just for emphasis here, we'll put, put, could put parentheses there to say only the x variables being raised to the n. And what you want to always assume here in this setup is that uh, this a value right here is going to be your original coefficient. And then x is going to be a variable, of course. And then this n right here is going to be your original exponent. So those, the a and the n are just going to be regular numbers like a 2 or a 5 or a 1 third or something along those lines. So as you get ready to derive, okay, first of all, our notation is going to be a little prime sign there to indicate that we've taken the derivative. Um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this n by that a. So the new coefficient is a n. Keep the x. And then we're going to subtract one from the exponent. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to go practice some crazy bears now. So as the problems get a little uglier and a little uglier, here's a nice little simple four-step process that we want to try to get in the habit of. So let's say we've got our original function here. And you'll notice it's not a really friendly format because of where that x to the fourth is. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it as three halves for my coefficient times x to the negative fourth. So I really haven't done, to get from here to here, I haven't done any calculus. We call that, you know, using our algebra two knowledge. And then I am ready to derive. And just like we said in the previous uh, slide, we're gonna take this negative four, multiply it by the three halves to get negative 12 halves. And then all we did is we did subtract, and here's where it gets a little crazy, we had to subtract a one from that exponent which made the, the negative five that we've got up here, okay? All right, now, this technically is our derivative, but we're gonna rewrite it to kind of mirror the format of the original problem. So first of all, I simplified that coefficient to make negative six, and then I took x to the negative five and rewrote it as x to the fifth on the bottom, and this was my final, most simplified answer. So we're gonna kind of practice that four-step process here today. And, um, so our very first example right here is, I'm going to rewrite it so that the coefficient is 8 fifths. Now what was nice about this is that x squared was in the numerator, but I'm just going to center that x squared so it's kind of lined up with the center of my fraction. Now as far as deriving it, and you notice I'm using like a y instead of an f of x, but it's all equivalent. I'm going to multiply this 2 by the 8 fifths to make 16 fifths x and then subtract 1. Now rewriting that or simplifying it is going to make 16x over 5. Okay, next example. Do you hear a little slurping next to me? Yeah, we got a wild hot chocolate drinker there. All right, so there's an extra challenge here in this next one, and it's these, these parentheses right here. And I might even do kind of a two-step process of rewriting it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both the 2 and the x to the 4th power to make 16x to the 4th. And then rewriting that is going to make a coefficient of 3 sixteenths x to the negative 4. Okay, now we're ready to derive. So up to this point, I haven't done any calculus at all. What I want to do now is I want to multiply, let's see, I want to multiply this negative 4 times this coefficient right here, which is going to make negative 12 sixteenths. And then subtracting 1 from the exponent makes negative 5. Now, if I rewrite that, uh, first of all, that coefficient is going to reduce to negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to put the negative 3 on top, the 4 on the bottom, and then I'm going to move that variable to the bottom. And there's my best simplified answer. We had another nice challenge here in our third example. And so first of all, I'm going to take one baby step. And instead of the cubed root of x squared, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 2 thirds power. And then, of course, we don't like that variable being in the denominator. We always want to rewrite it to the point where that variable pops to the numerator. So I've got a coefficient of 5, 6, and then I'm going to center x to the negative 2 thirds in the center of that. 
Now we're ready to take the derivative and do some calculus. So if I multiply the negative 2 thirds times the 5 6, I'm going to get negative 10 over 18 x. Now, when we say we're going to subtract 1, and this is, a, this is really big, what we're doing here is we're really subtracting 3 thirds. Okay, and so that's going to make negative 5 thirds for that new exponent right here, negative 5 thirds. All right, now as far as simplifying it, my coefficient reduces to negative 5 ninths. And then on the bottom, I'm going to put x to the 5 thirds here on the bottom. And you might even want to do this, go negative 5 over 9, and then do the cubed root of x to the 5th to make it look really nice. Hey, we've got just one more example to do here as we're cruising through. And one of my favorite tricks here on this next example, you'll notice how there's a monomial right here. Well, I'm going to rewrite this problem and kind of split it into three separate individual fractions. So every term in the numerator is going to get divided by that denominator. And then as I reduce those, each term, it's going to, the first term is going to be 4x minus 3 plus now this term right here is the key. That's going to be by far the, the most challenging one. And I'm going to rewrite that as x to the negative 1. So just like all the other examples, we want to make sure that the variable was in the numerator. Now we're ready to actually do some calculus and derive. So the derivative of 4x just becomes 4. The derivative of 3 becomes 0. And then the derivative of this term becomes minus x to the negative 2. Rewriting that makes 4 minus 1 over x squared. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all there is to it. So hope that you found those problems a little bit challenging. Hopefully they pulled you out of your comfort zone just a little bit. And uh, by golly, we're getting pretty good at derivatives.